Because if you don't treat it like a business, no one else will. And it is a business, a business that makes money, a business that helps you do what you want to do. <sighs> And that's exactly what a business is. What are some things you should do so that you are running it like a business, other people are seeing it as a business, and most importantly, you are profiting like a business. First things first, it always starts off with the internal, which is how you're actually running it, how you're treating it, how you see it. And that starts off with making a schedule. You can't run a business if you don't know what you're supposed to do. That's why all businesses have schedules. They have meetings, even though they're super, super boring. I totally agree, but it's what goes on in that meeting. It provides that structure. And I'm not saying you need to sit down from nine to five and do your UGC business, but create a schedule that works for you. When are you reaching out? When are you recording? When are you creating your portfolio? That type of schedule, will actually bring you results and it will also make you see it as like, oh, I'm doing something more officially. Right now I'm in Thailand and while I'm not doing as much UGC as I've done in the past, one, because obviously if you're traveling, it's a lot harder for brands to send you products. But another big reason is I cut down on the number of brands that I'm working with just because I want to partner with more strategic alliances and do more content with them like on different platforms instead of working with more brands and working with less brands and just doing a lot more content for them the thing is even while i'm here and even when i wasn't here when i was back in florida i always treated it like a business i have my schedule i have my calendar i block out exactly when i'm doing what thursdays are my filming days it's a thursday and hello we're filming even in Thailand. And I've talked about this a lot more inside the UGC series, but basically you work backwards. So you know how much you have to block because it's not just saying like, okay, let me block three hours to do this and this, and let me just block a time for outreach. And you know, we'll just stare at each other's faces and pretend like we're doing outreach. No, it all comes with a plan. So if you're working backwards, you know exactly what you have to do to reach whatever goal you are trying to accomplish because a business has a goal. And if you meet those goals, I'll talk about that in just a second. Now, when you are planning and working backwards, you decide, let's say, how many brands you wanna work with or how much you wanna be making per month. Same exact thing. It's a very similar measurement to go based off of. So all you have to do is decide which one you feel more connected with and which one you want to track. Let's be honest, tracking revenue and how much we wanna make is always easier. And it's also very psychologically rewarding and motivating. So that's the one I would pick. You decide how much you wanna make. You go backwards and realize, okay, based on the pricing that I've set, how many brands does that equal to? Let's say you want to make a thousand, you're charging a hundred. These are just random numbers so that I can do easy math, okay? This is not what I recommend or anything. So a thousand divided by a hundred, you're working with 10 brands. How can you find and land 10 clients? You start reaching out and you realize out of how many that you contacted, how many say yes. So you get a percentage. So you contact a ton of brands to start off. Let's say at the beginning, you've contacted 20, 30 brands, and you realize that out of those brands, five have said yes. When in Thailand, drink coconut water all day, by the way. So basically now you have that percentage, you have that probability, and you know how many you need to reach out to for 10 to say yes. You're working backwards, that way you know how many you have to reach out to when you can do that how much time you need to do that you block your day you sit there you do the outreach for those of you that have sent me messages there is no copy and paste message that i recommend that's the one thing that i don't recommend doing copying and pasting a message to every brand they are tired of receiving the same exact things make it personal that's why i give you like an outline but not word for word what to do 
reach out to the brand, talk about what product you love, talk about why you would create such great content for them, why you have like that extra little like spark in you that fits so well with that brand. Be creative for them to say, hey, this looks like a great partnership. Let me say yes. And voila, you have your schedule, you have your outline because you've worked backwards, you know exactly what you need to do, when you need to do it, you have all that down, just like a business. Now, what we don't have down is this. This is my last sip of coconut water, and this is dangerous. We need more coconut water, for sure. There's just something so different about coconut water in Thailand. Oh, no, 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 no. Now, normally, I could just order groceries. I could get some coconut water, but... Why not go out on a little adventure as we continue the steps that you need? Hearing this might suck a little for those of you that are like boss babes and I don't want to have a boss and I don't listen to anyone. You need to treat yourself as an employee because if not, you kind of let yourself get away with a ton of things and trust me i know what i'm talking about i've run my own business for now like five years and i'm not joking when i say really treat yourself like an employee if an employee doesn't perform what would you do if the employee doesn't meet what they told you they were going to meet what would you do if the employee doesn't work the hours they told you they were going to work what would you do they don't accomplish what they said they would accomplish, what would you do? Coconut water run. We had to bring our driver Gabe because even though I think I can drive the scooter, these roads are dangerous. <laughs> coconut water scored. Now here's the funny part. While I do think you have to treat yourself as an employee, I also think completely the opposite. You need to put some skin in the game in order to perform at your highest. This is what I mean. When you have nothing to lose, you have little to gain. Dentro. Because the reality is UGC is a very low entry business, a very low entry way of making an income. So anyone can start and you don't need anything to start, not even a camera, not even equipment. So what happens there is basically you have nothing to lose. When you put in something, time, dedication, money works very well for some reason psychologically. When you put in money, maybe you invest into an equipment or whatever, it's like you feel like you have to earn that back and make it worth the investment. <laughs> Coconut water. That whole human psychology of how that works and why that works, I don't necessarily fully understand it. But what I have noticed is that me, for example, I thrive based off of a reward system. So I know that when I set my goals, I tie them to a reward, maybe something I wanna get myself. And it doesn't have to mean like I'm getting my, no. It's little things that trigger like the human psychology and that fuel you to want to work harder towards a goal. And this is something that we all have to understand for ourselves. For me, it's like little rewards along the way. For you, it can be something completely different. For you, maybe it's like, words of affirmation that you know you say to yourself that help you keep going it's like the psychology behind it that is going to fuel you to get to the goals that you're setting i also got these little like chocolate nuggets at the grocery store incredible i used to have these when i was little because this is also a brand that they have in colombia for like hot chocolates like our like nesquik type of thing Incredible. Anyways, you wanna know what else real businesses aren't doing? They're not comparing. I opened up Twitter 
and I went down the rabbit hole of UGC Twitter, which good for you if that is your method of growing. I think there's a huge community on there. I've never used it, so I don't think you need to be on there to work with brands. I've worked with over 200 brands and I've never used it. Now, one thing that I did notice is, wow, the people on Twitter, it just automatically gets you into this loophole of, oh my God, you're getting this. I'm not getting this. You're working with this brand. What are you doing? It's, it's a weird sensation. So watch out if you are on there, but keep in mind that a real business is not comparing. It's not comparing. Why do you have this? Why do I not have this? Why did you work with them? And I didn't work with them. Maybe I reached out and they didn't answer, but they answered to you. And I talked about this in last week's newsletter. When you know exactly what you want, you know, for example, I can see thousands of people partnering with the best beauty brands. That's wonderful. But I don't feel like, oh my God, I didn't partner with beauty brands because I know I don't want to partner with beauty brands. It's just not like an industry that I love. I personally rather partner with food brands, wellness brands, travel brands, because that's something that I love. But getting deep into knowing who I do want to work with, who I don't want to work with, helps you not fall down the rabbit hole of comparison. And that's something that a real business owner needs to do. As a UGC business owner, and this is a good one, businesses overall, you start off a business with something called an MVP, a minimum viable product. This minimum viable product is the product that basically your brand is known for. It's what you start off with. So for example, a big brand, when they launch, they don't start off with the whole full catalog. They start off with one product that they perfected to the dot. And that is what they're going to market with your MVP. Your MVP has to be so good that any brand you reach out to, they're like, wow, I need to work with this creator because what they're offering me is wonderful. It's great for the value and I'm getting so much more than what I expected. Your MVP can be a bundle. It can be a package. It can be the way that you offer your content, the way that you sell it. Maybe you do a turnaround time of two hours. Who knows? I'm not saying that you should do that, but think about what you can do to make your product really, really stand out. Remember the content that you're offering is your product. So how can you perfect that and make it into a stellar MVP? Along with that, you have your differentiators, which we talked about a little, that goes hand in hand with creating your MVP. What do you have that the creator next door doesn't have? What is your little advantage for me? I'm going to be honest, a lot of brands love that I can create content in English and Spanish. That sets me apart automatically. And that's a really big reason why I can work with big brands, have big contracts because they're getting a bundle of content from what I'm creating. And you might not want to hear this, but it needs to be said. A real business understands their profit and their losses. They're tracking their time. They're realizing if this business is profitable or if it's not profitable. Side note, profit and loss is not just about, yes, I'm making money, I'm profitable. It's so much more than that. And if you aren't clear on how that works, comment profit and loss down below and I'll know and I can go deeper into how I follow it and how I make sure that my businesses are always profitable, including UGC by itself. I know it sucks, but it had to be said because finance is a big, huge part. I mean, finance is business. It's how, what makes a business. It's what literally lets a business still be a business. It's all about finance. And that's why if you are running UGC like a business, you need to be using the right tools. That means for accounting, for invoicing, for accepting your payments, for tracking your time. Don't be afraid to use tools. And this one, this one's going to scare some of you guys. You can't be afraid to hire. If your business gets to the point where, hmm, I'm making good money, what if I hired someone to take over the outreach? What if I hired someone to take over the editing? What if I hired someone to make the scripts for me? That's how a real business owner thinks. And it's not necessarily only like hiring a full-time person. You can hire contractors. You can hire based off of the project. You can even hire tools like we talked about to do that for you. For example, Copy AI is a platform that I absolutely love 
that uses AI, which is booming right now, to generate full on juicy scripts for you. So from this day forward, no more treating this as a side thing, as a hobby, treat it as a business if that's what you're looking for. And if you're really someone that wants to take this UGC, seriously. With all that being said, were you treating it like a business before? Or are you realizing, wow, this is actually something that I can do, if you're serious about it, of course, and actually turn this into a business? That's something to think about. Better listen up, we about to make it happen.